Today we gather to celebrate abundance. Today we gather to celebrate being enough. Enough as each one of us. Enough as a gathered community. Today we gather like flowing water. There are times to be ice. There are times to be steam. There are times to flow freely. As the Tao Te Ching says, the highest good is like water. Water benefits all things without argument. It flows into the lowest places and so shows the way of the creative universe. Today, we gather like water. Today, we gather to celebrate being enough. Today, we, we gather to celebrate abundance. All life comes from water. Life started in the ocean, where it began to take its many and amazing forms. Babies are cradle in water before they are born. Everything that lives needs water, from the smallest plants to the largest whale. From the beginning of history, humans have built their homes and their lives around water. Today, we celebrate water, which connects and nourishes all life. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. So say the people of Flint, Michigan. So say the children of Detroit, Michigan. So say those arrested for putting out water for Los Immigrantes in the parched de deserts that divide Mexico and Los Estados Unidos. We thirst. We thirst for justice. We thirst for compassionate, compassion and ultimate meaning. Jesus said, if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. Each of us comes to this sacred space today to dip into the well that nourishes our thirsty spirits. Each of us comes with our own cup of goodness to pour into the well. The chalice is a vessel, a bowl, a cup. We drink together. With this light we place in this vessel, we also place our common hopes, our shared dreams, our mutual commitment to a world made whole. May we be strengthened in our bonds of love and peace. Our common hopes, our shared dreams, our mutual commitment to a world made whole. When we talk about being a covenantal community, that is the essence of what we mean. A covenant of mutuality and commitment to bring our best selves and seek restoration when we fall short. It's the very foundation of Unitarian Universalism. The world needs our commitment, our passion for justice, our love for the web of all life, at a time when being a part of church is no longer sort of socially expected, at a time when the world is gripped by fear of indifference and unleashed hatred and cruelty, in a time when really nobody expects just regular folks to do something about it, to take a stand, at a time like this, it is imperative that we bring kindred hearts together. That's really what Unitarian Universalism is. Sure, you can think you, you thoughts all on your own, alone, in a room, on a path. But this faith has never been about beliefs and creeds. Its bedrock is deeds, its relationship. We change lives to change the world. Today, we're going to welcome a new member into our church, Devin Southall. Devin was an active member of the Buffalo Church and came to Amherst about a year ago. She's already found a place to grow roots on the website crew and most recently,
taking on the leadership of the Climate Justice Green Sanctuary team. We're so glad that Devin and her children, Emma and Grayson, have decided to make UUCA their home. So Devin is going to sign the membership book. She felt it was really important for her children to be part of this commitment to this congregation. And we are so glad to have you with us and look forward to lots of grand adventures together. Oh, and Lorraine just made it here for a Kodak moment. So <laughs> just look natural and like you don't know it's a picture being taken. I've never seen them look more natural. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. So perhaps you are thinking, well, I've been coming for a little while and I might be ready to sign, but I don't want to go up front and do a thing like that. Well, that's okay. You can also sign the book just in my presence or the presence of one of our board officers. So see somebody after the service if you're like, I think I'm ready. Okay. It would be grand to have you with us. I would like us to sing again, and this time we're all going to sing the same song. Isn't that fun? <laughs> be like water, run deep, run clear, fill any space to its own dimension. Respond to the moon, to gravity, change colors with the light. Hold your temperature longer than the surrounding air. Take the coast by storm, go underground. Bend light. Be the one thing people need, even when they're fasting. Eat boulders quietly. Be a universal solvent. Three people were searching for the water of life, hoping to drink from it and to live forever. The first of these people was a warrior, and he reckoned that the water of life would have to be mighty strong. In fact, it was probably a raging torrent that he would need to conquer. So he went in full armor with all his weapons, believing that he could get that water to yield to him, to his strength. The second person on this journey was an enchantress. And she reckoned that the water of life would be very magical. Perhaps a whirlpool or a geyser something that she would really need some good spells to manipulate. So she went in her long starry robe, hoping to outwit the water. The third person was a trader, and he reckoned that the water of life would be very costly. Maybe it was a fountain of pearls or, or diamonds, and so he loaded his clothes, filled his pockets, created new seams, made new hems in his clothes, and filled himself with coins because he would purchase that water. Well, these travelers, unlikely as they were, traveled together. I can imagine it was a noisy adventure between the full armor tum, 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 and all that change rattling in the trader's pockets and seams. And finally, they reached their destination. And they found that each and every one of them had been very wrong about the essence of water. It wasn't a torrent to be intimidated by force. It wasn't a whirlpool to be charmed by spells. And it wasn't a fountain of pearls or diamonds to be bought for money. It was just this tiny sparkling stream. And all of its benefits were absolutely free. But of course, you had to be able to kneel to drink from it. Well, this caused these seekers a bit of consternation. The warrior was in full armor. In my head, he looks like the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. And he couldn't bend. Hmm, no water of life for you. 
The enchantress had on her magical robe, and if it were soiled, who knew? Some of that magic might leak away, and she dared not kneel. And the traitor, he had so much change in his pockets and seams and hems that if he did manage to kneel, he wasn't going to get back up. Well, there was one solution. So the warrior laid aside his armor, and the enchantress laid aside her magic robe, and the traitor laid aside the clothes that he had stuffed with money. And then each of them, dressed only in humility, could kneel to drink from the water of life and receive its sweet, cool, and life-giving benefits. Hmm. This is the time where you make that thinking noise. Mmm. Very nice. You obviously have a lot of practice in that. We bring our waters, which have touched the west, the north, the south, and the east, which come from the sky, the surface of the earth, and from deep wells and springs within the earth. We bring water that belong to lakes, streams, and reservoirs of fresh waters that quench our thirst. We bring water that is part of the great oceans and the seas that circle the globe, teeming with life, the source of all life. We bring water to this place of meeting and sharing. Come forward, all of us, and bring your waters or pour from the common source. Take your place in the communi this community of compassion. So perhaps this is your first water ceremony, or your 30th, or somewhere in between. So we have various bowls, because we all come to different places along the river, don't we? We're not all in the same spot right now emotionally, spiritually, physically. And so at each of these, you'll find a vessel with water, or perhaps you brought your own. Regardless, I hope you will share just a few drops. If you brought a quart, please take most of a quart outside later and <laughs> share it with the abundance around us. You all know what to do. Even if you've never done this before, your intuition will guide you. So I invite you to come forward. It will be a little chaotic and wonderful. Come forward and bring your waters.
In this water, there is new water formed in the atmosphere daily. There is old water, water as old as the earth, water from which life has evolved over the eons. This is the stream of life from which all life flows. All people are connected by this stream, for it runs through our veins and courses through the stems and leaves of plants. Water is the symbol of the cleansing power of forgiveness and the faithful promise of healing love. It is the symbol and the reality of the oneness that unites humankind and all of life. Today, we bring water to give back to the earth, to mingle with all the waters of the earth and join all living things. Today, we pour water to honor the earth that gives us life, to honor the community of all life, plants, animals, and people. Today, we offer thanks for the gift of water and also for the web of life of which we are a part. May our separate wa waters join into one sacred stream as we live and add our lives into the stream of living souls who live who love, who work for justice, and who hunger and thirst for peace. Amen. Happy homecoming. Whether this church has been your home for many years, or you're a first time guest today, I hope this place feels like home. I hope it feels like home with the warm spirit of welcome. Earlier, we sang an adaptation of a song by Nirvana, Come as you are, as you were, as love wants you to be, as a friend among friends. That's the kind of feeling that I want for you, not the feeling of accidentally showing up at someone else's family reunion. The Girl Scout Campfire song really gets it right. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other gold. <laughs> I knew we had some. May we be rich in, in friendship in this gathered community. I love the idea of homecoming, where it doesn't matter how long you've been gone, or if you remember to write or call, re relationships just pick up where they left off. I also recognize that homecoming can feel risky, and not all of the associations are sweet. And I honor the courage that it takes to decide to return or to stay apart. For today, for this moment, let's allow ourselves to be swept away by the beauty of the day, the angle of the sun that signals the end of summer and the first hints of autumn. Let's breathe in the scent of crushed leaves, the sharper, clearer air. My husband and I live two blocks from a school, and suddenly there is much more activity in the neighborhood. Occasionally, the voices calling out the timeless, guys, wait up. Late afternoons and early on Saturdays, we can hear the coaches whistle as the football team prepares for homecoming. And yesterday afternoon, Somebody won big, because there was a lot of cheering going on. So with some apologies for my redirection uh, of Aesop, 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 I really don't know how to say his name, because I've heard it all three ways. So I'm going to say it just that one time with all three. That person's story of the ant and the grasshopper. You probably didn't know it was a homecoming story. So maybe I should turn it around. No, I won't put you on the spot, because it may have been a long time since you heard this story. It happened that the ants were doing their ant thing, bustling around, carrying pieces of crust and seeds and things from one place to another to another. Very, very busy. And then, as they were working, they heard music coming off in the distance, and they got closer and closer, and who could it be but the grasshopper, just fiddling away. And the ants looked meaningfully at each other. You know the look. 
Oh man, here he comes. Have you been fiddling all summer? Well, yes, and boy, I'm really hungry. Can I have some of that? And the ants were mortified. You didn't work for this. This is the fruit of our labor. We have been doing all this work all summer to prepare for the season ahead. And what have you been doing? Huh? Nothing. Nothing worth doing. Well, the grasshopper was feeling pretty badly about that because at the time it seemed really important to make some music. There was so much beauty, so much to celebrate. And he really thought that maybe he'd contributed to the overall good of the community. But the ants had another thought about that. And the way the story is left is they just turn him away. Nope, none for you. You gotta earn your keep around here, Buster. I, I remember that in the original, the Buster part. <laughs> so I have to tell you, I don't like that story. Not one little bit. And maybe it's because I'm a hybrid, a mixed combo, a grant hopper. Being a grant hopper gives me two opportunities to be wrong, work too much and play too much. Shame researcher Brene Brown would have a field day with that. So I wonder, were you fiddling all summer? Or were you plugging along, nose to the ground, the grindstone, nose everywhere except in roses and daisies and enjoying the aroma of a campfire promising s'mores? If you're a grant hopper, you may have spent the summer tuning your fiddle, sorting music, making big plans to rest and relax, but you never actually got there. If you're a grant hopper, you may have made great provisions for the seasons to come and forgot to nibble on those summer sweets while you were working. I think we're all a little bit grant hoppers, a little scattered, Always feeling that while we're doing one thing, we really should be doing the other? Well, welcome, sibling grant hoppers. Welcome to this time, this place, made sacred by our grant hopper presence together. This time is for you. There is nothing else you should be doing aside from being here with your whole self. Whether we are ants or grasshoppers by nature, it is helpful to remember that we are human beings, not human doings. It is okay to let go sometimes and relax in the moment. Some of us relax by letting go, and some by knowing that their rowboat is tethered to the dock and we can nap or cloud gaze without getting lost. Neither your inner ant nor your inner grasshopper need to wait in the car while you check the box on your to-do list that says, church homecoming, check. As grant hoppers, professional jugglers of time and resources, we are pretty adept at doing it all and feeling bad if we're just not feeling it. So for this time together, honor both your inner ant and your inner grasshopper. Give your ant a project, maybe to sort and organize your good intentions into a strategic plan, and let your grasshopper stretch their wings and tune the fiddle for an autumnal jig. We're gonna learn a lot this year. We'll raise our voices, we'll play and work and sing, We'll make new friends and deepen existing connections. And truthfully, some of us will just never get hooked, just feeling like we really are crashing someone else's family reunion. And if you're in that last category, please know that you are seen and loved. You don't need to feel displaced, longing for the familiar territory of your own home or usual Sunday morning activities. This is an open circle. We strive to create intentional community together by willing to be vulnerable, to say something if we're feeling disconnected, and to risk getting involved. Coming together in intentional community is hard. And we're all practicing to get better at welcoming one another into the circle. 
We're all learning how to use our voices to speak out in welcome and frustration, in celebration and disappointment. All of our voices matter, including those who haven't arrived here yet, the ones we're practicing to be ready for, even as we dwell in the present tense. We are here now, wobbling between past and future, trying to be present in the moment. The most important thing is that we are together now. I've always wondered why Zen masters refer to their students as grasshopper, at least in the movies. <laughs> and now I think I have an answer, at least one possibility of an answer in a constellation of possibilities. And we get a hint in the story. The ants do not admire the grasshopper for their fine music. They certainly do not recognize the grasshopper's contribution to the sacred economy of reciprocity in work and play. The ants refuse to share of what they have with one who has squandered their time, squandered time, by bringing beauty into the world, squandered time by living moment to moment with no little check boxes to keep time. Personally, I prefer the gospel translation of this story. You know, the one where Jesus is visiting his friends in Bethany. Jesus is chilling in the living room with his friends, with Lazarus' sister Mary at his feet, while the other sister, Martha, huffs in the kitchen, banging pans and muttering. I know she did that. It's what I would do. My aunt self, that is. In this drama, Martha played the ant and Mary the grasshopper, sitting at the master's feet to be broken open. And the thing that the gospel account leaves out is that Martha and Mary are actually the same person. They are a grant hopper, listening and huffing, banging pans and hanging on every word. So blessings, grasshopper. Blessings, aunt, and blessings, grant hopper. You are with your people. You can tether your rowboat here and rest. Tomorrow will arrive right on schedule with music to play and provisions to gather for the seasons to come. And meanwhile, there is this moment, this moment to begin to learn how to keep that circle wide and to forge new friendships and deepen existing connections. Welcome home, y'all. Let's sing together, because it's my favorite thing to do.